Father, we give you praise for this day. We thank you for the word that we are going to share. We pray that you bless your word. That it will bear fruit in our lives. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. The title of my message today is it is possible. Tell your neighbor it's possible. Turn to somebody else and tell them it's possible. I want us to read the book of from the book of Isaiah. We are going to read a few verses here. And we are going to read from chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. And before we get there, I want to give you a little background that happened before this chapter was written. And uh, when these verses were being written. Isaiah chapter 60 was written to the Jews that had come out of the captivity and had seen some very terrible dark times. But at the same time, it is also addressing Jerusalem when God is promising Jerusalem a latter glory that that out of its ruins, it will arise and become the city it is meant to be. But at the same time, Isaiah 60 is a chapter that prophetically declares the glory of the church. At a time that was to come, so he was not just talking about Jerusalem he was not just talking about the Jewish uh, people that loved God but because it was a prophetic chapter it was also talking about the times to come addressing the church so this is a chapter Sula, that is a, that is talking about hope before it comes there are things that happened a lot of tough times people that had been taken into captivity because of sin but then God comes back to tell his people that it is not yet over. There is still a way out of this. There is still a better day. These people needed hope because they had been beaten. They had been scattered. And that's why when you read this chapter, he talks about their children returning. He talks about the city to being rebuilt. But as I told you, it is also in reference of the church. The church that we are part of. That even after all has happened, God can still bring us back. So let us read verse 1 of Isaiah 60. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Now, the reason I gave you the background is so that you can understand the kind of people God is talking to. He's talking to people that have been in captivity. He's talking to people who have lost a lot. They have lost even their esteem. 
Their city is not respected as it was. These are people that have been slaver and in bondage. They have been scattered for a long time. But now he's telling them, Arise, shine, for your glory has come. Your light has come. I want to talk to somebody that has been down for some time. You have been in some period of darkness. As it was possible for these Jews. I want to tell you that it is possible to arise after having fallen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is possible to arise even after having fallen. It is possible and you have to believe it is possible for the Bible tells us that even a righteous man can fall seven times but it is possible for them to get up for all the seven falls they can still arise hallelujah it is possible to shine again Jerusalem was a, a city that was shining but all of a sudden its light went out just like some of us some of us spiritually we were shining some of us regarding finances we were shining but right now the glory disappeared I want to tell you it is possible to shine again if you had lost your light if you had lost your glory it is possible to shine again so arise and shine because the glory of the Lord is upon you your light has come hallelujah Hallelujah. Verse 19. This is what the Bible says. You can go and read the entire chapter. Very wonderful words. You claim them and declare them upon your life. Verse 19. After he has told them to arise and shine, and so many other wonderful words in between there, and now he has told them their glory has come. Then he says, The sun will no more be your light by day. And no will your bright will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And your God will be your glory. So when he says that your glory has come, he's not just talking about something he's sending them. But he's talking about he himself having come to his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is possible Chisoboka. for God to become your all in all. And he replaces whatever you have been depending on. So he's telling them you have been depending on the sun. You have been depending on the moon for light. But now you will not need the sun. You will not need the moon. I will be your sun. I will be your moon. Whatever you've been looking at as your source. I'm the one going to become your source. It is possible, child of God, to reach to a place whereby God is your all in all. 
when you don't need to look at the sun you don't need to look at the moon you don't need to look for some rich people you don't have to because somewhere when you talk about the sun and the moon some of you don't understand but these, these are sources of energy sources of light so you, this was the, what they needed for farming they needed it for light they needed it for so many things but God is saying whatever you've been looking at as your source of help whatever you've been looking at for sustainability I am going to become your source Source. I will not uh, I will not just allow the sun to come during day and then the moon to come in the night but I am going to become your all in all I will be the source of your light and then he says something wonderful nor will, the bright, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you for the Lord will be your everlasting light not for some time but your everlasting everlasting light. And in verse 20 he says, your sun will never set again. And your moon will wane no more. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is possible for your sun never to set again. You know, sometimes we expect to have ups and downs. You expect to get money at the end of the month. Or at the beginning of the month. That is your sun rising. And then you expect around the mid-month. For your sun to set. Praise the Lord. How many of you live in that kind of life? You know when your financial sun sets and you know when it rises. How many of you live that kind of life? It rises on first. It rises. Around seventh. Darkness covers. Your life. And you stay with just a little moonlight. Some of us live that life. You expect the sun to rise and then to set. But it is possible for your son never to set again. I want to declare to you, child of God, that it is possible for your son never to set again. For you to get money and never be broke again. For you to stop suffering forever. For you to never experience that pain. But some people even have a schedule. They say when the month is beginning, I'm always sick. Around the mid-month, then I'm quite fine. And at the end of the month, I begin to expect to become sick. Because that is how your life has been set. The son of your health it always rises and then sets. The, the financial sun of your life. It rises and then sets. You are always in that up and down. But it is possible to have a life. Where your sun never sets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is what he told them that the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory and your 
sun will never set again. When God becomes your glory, when God replaces your sun and your moon, you, you will never have ups and downs. You will never have Lord shedding. Praise be to God. Because when God is the one in that position, He is a constant. So as long as men are your providers, as long as your job is your son, then you can always go out. But when God is your glory and your light, it is an everlasting light. Your sun will never set again. Hallelujah. And he says it again. The Lord will be your everlasting light. And your days of sorrow will end. It is possible child of God for your days of sorrow to come to an end. This may be for one person but let it sink within your heart that the days of your sorrow can come to an end. I don't want you to get used to a life of sorrow. I don't want you to be used to a life of suffering. You have to believe today that your eyes Isaiah 60 is coming to pass. That finally God can declare to you. And he's declaring to you. That the days of sorrow. Are coming to an end. It is possible. Lift your hand and say it is possible. For the days of my sorrow. To come to an end. And I believe this is the time for that word to come to fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 21 then all your people will be righteous. It is possible child of God for all your people to be righteous. He's talking to an entire city of Jerusalem and he's saying all your inhabitants all the people in the city will be righteous. If a whole city city can have righteous people. All of them righteous. Then it is possible, child of God, for all the people in your family to embrace the righteousness of Christ. It is possible for everyone in your family to be saved. I will say that again. It is possible for everyone in your family to be saved. I don't want you to give up hope. Even if you are the only one who is saved right now. I want you to declare the words of Isaiah 60. And you declare that according to the words of Isaiah 60, 21. All my people will be righteous in the mighty name of Jesus because it is possible. If it could be possible for an entire city, it can be possible for an entire family. It can be possible for your entire clan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can receive the word, and you receive it for them all then you, it can happen in Jesus name
He says your people shall be all righteous. They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting. The work of my hands. That I might be glorified. I love the way God is owning this entire project. And it is very possible, child of God, for God to get glory for himself out of whatever made you cry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is talking to people that have been in tears. He is talking to people that have been in hard situations. And he is saying as you arise out of those situations, I am going to turn things around that I may be glorified for my own glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is possible for God to get glory out of whatever has made you cry. Out of whatever has made you suffer. Lift your hand and say, Lord, may you receive glory out of all my suffering in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he says wonderful words here. In verse 22, as I conclude this reading, he says the least of you will become a thousand. The smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time I will do this swiftly. Hallelujah. It is possible for the least to become a thousand and for the smallest to become a mighty nation. Probably you didn't understand what I just said. Let me tell you this, child of God. This is not a word for the mighty. This is not a word for those that come from the very privileged families. This is not the word for those who are well off. It is for those who think they are the least. It is for those who think they are the least. It is for those who think they are the smallest. Those who think they can do nothing. Because you are the last born. Those who think they cannot achieve anything. Because you are the smallest in the clan. Because you are the smallest in the family. It is possible according to the word of God. For such a person to become a thousand. Where you who were the least to become a thousand. You who was despised to become a big nation. Praise the Lord. Say in the name of Jesus. Even my smallest man. May the Lord multiply it a thousand times. I pray for the smallest account. May the Lord multiply them times a thousand. In the name of Jesus. It is possible. Jesus. And according to human wisdom, it is not understandable. Because the power of divine multiplication it cannot be comprehended by the human mind. You cannot comprehend in your mind the power of God's multiplication. Because according to you, two times two is four. But God can multiply two by two and he gets one thousand. You cannot understand it. That is why he multiplied the, the, the five loaves and the two fish and he fed the five thousand. 
He is a God of divine multiplication. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. He is a God of divine multiplication. He used two small fish. And he got five loaves of bread. And he started breaking them. And he fed over 5,000 people. How can you explain that? Your human mind cannot comprehend it. You can find that story in John chapter 6. From verse 1 to 14. If you have never read about it, they counted the men alone. And there were about 5,000 that ate. They didn't count the children and the women. So we don't even know how many thousands they were. So when God says the list shall become a thousand. Yes, and the smallest shall become a mighty nation. Do not try to understand it with your mind. Understand it with your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you try to use your human mind, you cannot see how you can become a mighty nation. You cannot see how you can become a thousand. That's what he told Abraham. An old man. Oh, about 90 years. And he's telling him, you have no child. But your descendants shall be more than the sand of the ocean. If you can count the stars, then you'll be able to count your descendants. How do you understand that if you're Abraham? It does not make sense. Even if you are to give me children, how many children can I have? That can be more than the sand of the ocean. So when God says such words. He can never lie remember. Whatever he says is true. So when the word comes to you. Don't just say eh. God said funny things to the Israelites. He said that one can become a thousand. Indeed, that, that was the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> no, no, no. Believe it as your word. But don't try to understand it with your head. Understand it with your faith. That if God said it, it can happen. It is possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know when God makes a promise, He's the one to do it. He's not going to tell you to look for how to do it. That's why he said, I am the Lord. And I am the one going to make it happen swiftly. If it is God who has promised, is there anybody here that has the promise of God upon their lives? If it is God who made the promise, he's the one going to do it. It is He's not you. He's going to use his power. He's going to use his glory. He's going to use his connections. He's going to use his ability. He's not going to need you to do what he said he would do. He said I'm the one who has promised all these things. I'm going to return your children. I'm going to make sure you rebuild. I'm going to make sure you have this and that. And afterwards, he says, All those things I have said, I am the Lord. And then he signs. And he says, I'm the one going to do it. Hallelujah. He does it himself. Mary asks, how shall it be? Because the angel came and said weird things. Just like he was talking about this thousand becoming a th this one becoming a thousand. 
the smallest becoming a mighty nation. Weird things at that time. Especially for people coming out of captivity. People who have been in the dark times. And the same way in the angel Gabriel comes to Mary. And he's, he's saying weird things. You, you, you are going to be pregnant. She says, I've, I've never slept with any man. How shall it be? And sometimes we ask that question. When God gives you a promise that is ambiguous. And you ask yourself a question, how shall it be? But he answers back to you. I am the Lord. I myself, I shall do it. I want to assure everybody here with a promise of God. That it is the Lord that shall do it. Don't try to do the calculations. You will run mad. You will wonder how you can move from one to a thousand. And whenever you try to calculate, it comes to 180 years. And you say, 180 years. Ah. Ah. And then you will go again. Integrate and differentiate. And get the square root. No tolako, no gatako, no multiply. No yonge no kutolako. You try to make sure it is squared. No vala mungeri yona. Okay, what if it is chubdi? No tandika no kuvala inda geri enda. What if I get this algorithm here? No genda mungeri yeye yomunda. Hallelujah. Vala. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will run mad. But you believe this one thing. If the Lord promised it, the Lord will do it himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And listen to this child of God. When God gets involved in anything, it cannot remain the same. That is why the moment he came in, and he said you no longer need the sun, you no longer need the moon. I'm your everything now. I have become your glory. I've become your light. Everything began to change. He began to talk about changes that are going to happen. When God gets involved into anything, it does not remain the same. It can't remain the same. When God gets involved in your business, Business. It will not be one by one making a bundle. It cannot remain that way. May the glory of God intervene in everything concerning you. That you may experience divine changes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what did he say? He said in the right time, in its time, I will do this swiftly. I will hasten it. I will quicken it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when it is the right time, God does it swiftly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why it was possible for God to take out the children of Israel out of Egypt in one day in one day in one day, in one day, in one day after 430 years of bondage hallelujah. hallelujah it was possible in one day because in that day the Lord had decided to do it sometimes we get frustrated because it has not happened because it is not happening you count the months You count the years And you say but when will it happen When it happens It happens swiftly Because the Lord has decided to do it You can take five years 
in poverty. But the day God says I'm delivering you from poverty. It is not going to come slowly. It will happen swiftly. At the right time. God does things swiftly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be a prisoner for two years. Just like Joseph was. But at the right time. For the fulfillment of the dream. God can take you out of prison in the morning. And in the evening you are in the palace. And not just there to visit. But there to receive your appointment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not a job of a cleaner. But the prime minister of Egypt. When God says I'm going to do it. He does it swiftly. So you wait. Be patient. Forget about the calculations. Because when he does it, it will not require the math that you have. Hallelujah. Let us read Mark. 10.27 And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in Mark 9.23, he say, Jesus said unto him, Yes, if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes stand up on your feet child of God let us pray and declare in the name of Jesus it is possible it is possible I said it is possible but how is it going to be possible? Only if you choose to believe. If you choose to believe that these things we've just talked about are possible, then they will be possible to you. For all things are possible to that person that chooses to believe. Lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus. I believe it is possible to arise after having fallen. It is possible to shine again. It is possible for God to become my all in all. It is possible for my son never to set again. It is possible for my days of sorrow to come to an end. It is possible Possible for my entire family to be saved. It is possible for me to become a mighty nation. It is possible for every promise of God to happen in my life. For God to multiply things in a way I've never understood. I believe it is possible. I join you as you declare in your faith, child of God. Apply the word where you need it. Apply this word where you need it. For all things are possible and to him that believes I agree with you as you pray in the mighty name of Jesus regarding every area you are touching regarding every area you are touching in the name of Jesus I agree with my brother's Lord. I agree with my sister's Lord that whatever we are believing today in accordance to your word it is possible Lord and you said all things you said all things 
are possible to him that believes. Father, I pray all the things I've talked about today and much more than I've talked about today let them be possible and to everyone that has chosen to believe even the one watching this message even the one listening to this message as they pray as they declare as they receive the word make all things possible let us come out with a testimony in the name of Jesus I declare child of God that which the spirit of the Lord is reminding of you in your heart is possible and shall come to pass by the power of the living in God. In Jesus mighty name. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Thank you King of glory. We give you praise. We know it is possible and it is going to come to pass in accordance to the will of God. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus.